First of all, I would like to thank to the team for the commitment and the effort made in the last spring. It was amazing and awesome because we are facing some illness during this spring. So that's great. Going through the numbers, we have completed almost all the commitments. As you can see, we have completed all the story points. Maybe for the next spring, we can be more challenging. Let's see. But for this, we did it. And also, we even complete issues without story points. So this is tricky. But we have complete nine complete tasks. Also, four bugs, squash it, and 15 improvements. So that's super great. OK, next slide, please, Adrian. In terms of goals, we are so happy we have complete all the goals. We have been able to help where possible with the third party lips, fixing some and peer reviewing others. So in detail, we have able to solve useful UX low hanging fruits according to the UX research. Also, we are completed two big projects for us, short term course hierarchy and the bulk editing course activities. And also we are ready to prepare the second iteration for the design activity cast. And as I said before, we help as long as possible with the third party lips. So next slide, please. Looking with some more details with the UX low hanging fruit that we have worked, we can see, for instance, that in the list that we are able to fix hidden sections and counter are no longer visible to the users when switch switching role also what happening before to work on this also we are working with the cursing this to apply well the multi-line filter so right now we have multi-line course index also we have added the ability to customize f5p styles with the theme settings scss so that's super great for the community also we have updated the course reports drop down to the tertiary navigation and is the case that other parts that we have a model to create consistency. Also, we have extended the functionality of the course index. And right now we are showing the text and media elements in the course index in non-editing mode. So the students can see that. And finally, one more improvement for the database activity in the UX time. So we have removed the reset button from the sticky footer and add it to the actions menu according for the community, listen to them. So that's great. Next slide, Adrian. About the libraries that we have worked, we want to highlight the update from the phone awesome. You can see we have great the phone awesome from 4.7 to 6.3.0. That's, you have the link from the issue here. So you want to see the details. It's great because we have a backward compatibility with the four icons you have here the official documentation to see more details but we are we are super lucky this time because we have two new styles right now with the new for awesome free so you can see in the slide the new styles but we have compatibility for the four versions so that's that's good and you can i added the link to the all free icons that we have right now. We have more icons that we have before, so that's super great. Next slide, please. Okay, about the activity cards redesign. We, we are working with PX and we have worked for this preparing the second iteration to do more testing. So for this, we have preparing the moderate testing sessions in user Zoom. Also, we have created a recruit form with time form. Also, we start participant requirements, emails, and posts in the community forums. Please, here is the link of the forums. So you can share this link with wherever you think could be good to participate. I think Sabine is going to share the link through the chat also. And always, we are preparing the card sorting exercise with Maze. And finally, in addition, reviewing all the kind of things, we have started an internal discussion about the dates of the activities and the completion dates to try to create a coherence and consistent with all them in the all the activities that we have. But this is going to be maybe for the next release. Next slide, please. And finally, Ferran will give us a demo, but before 
do a demo for the course hierarchy short term and the bulk activity edition. I'm going to do a super quick overview of the highlights for the two projects. For the course hierarchy short term, we have recovered the move right and left functionality, but only one level of indentation. Also, we can apply the indentation of the course index. We can show the indentation of the course index. And following the next two features, we are thinking on the users that have migrate for 4.0 or 4.1 without indentation and redesign of the courses. So we are create two new things. One is a new setting for enable and disable the course indentation for weeks and topics format. And the other is to be able for the admins to reset indentation for the courses on the site and start a new new indentation right now with only one level. So the next slide, please. And talking about the bulk editing course activities, the MUA project for this release, we added the bulk actions for sections, delete and move, also for activities, delete, move, and duplicate and ability. Also, we create a new sticky footer for these bulk actions and improve the reactive course editor. So right now it's easy to add more bulk actions for the next releases. So right now, Ferran is going to do a demo the two projects. So over to you, Ferran. OK. Uh, hi, I'm Ferran, one of the developers from Mopis team. And I will share my screen now. So Adrian, if you can unshare it, uh, OK. My Okay, this is the our bill of course general the the one that created with MDK. So we have many activities there and sections. So we have a few new options and features in the course editor. The first thing is now we reintroduce a new kind of indentation to the course. So it's not like the old indentation that has like fourteen levels. Uh, the current one it's just one level but it's the one that tested with users it was more used so it's like moving right an activity and it changes not only the indentation but it also the aspect so they loses all that border so that card statics it's out so it's more like a listing and it's applied also in the course index so all things indented in the course index are also there so now teachers can indent stuff move left and right and they can unindent anything at any moment so it's quite easy for the teachers to have this kind of representation so it's clear which activities are main and which activities are secondary to the course this will evolve in the future and we'll have more features to group things but that's a long term so for now it's this reintroduction of the indentation in a new way in both course index and course content and as as Carlos said, uh, because 4.0 and 4.1 does not have indentation, the admin has tools to reset the indentation in all courses if they want it, and they can disable by format. Okay, that's the first new thing. So indentation, it's back in a new way. And the other stuff we have right here is a new button called bulk editing here in the top, near the course title. So when I click this thing, it will automatically change some aspects of the course. For example, I don't have any button to add activities because now I'm in bulk edit mode. And the bulk edit mode works as most of you should expect. So I can select things, I can select activities, or I can select sections. So when a section is selected, the activities cannot be selected. And the other way around, if I select an activity, sections cannot be selected. And when bulk editing is on, it appears this is a sticky footer here. So if I close it, I will close also the bulk editing, as you can see. So this is a normal way with that activities and everything. And when I just turn it, bulk editing on, it will appear this uh, new sticky footer thing, which allows me to select all things in the same concept I already selected. So if I select an activity, I will select all activities. And if I select a section, it will select all sections on the course. 
there's only a few advanced things for selecting because I can click on the card directly to select an activity, but I can also shift click to select a range of activities from the last one selected to the next one. And we have quite a few advanced things like going like alt click on an activity card will select all the activities on the section. So it's easier for users to select all the activities in a single section. And about the actions itself, we have like uh, different actions for sections than for activities. So we can implement different actions for now. They are almost the same except from the duplicate with it's not in the bulk editing. So if I select, for example, some activities, I can edit the availability. Availability, it's, uh, it shows a model that you can select from all the available availability modes. So if uh, stealth activities are not available, of course, this option won't be there. But the good thing is that we can select directly the mode. You don't need to go to hide first and then go to a, a stealth activity. You can just go straight to the type of availability you want. So one will be applied to all the activities. The same happens with uh, the duplicate. The duplicate will duplicate all the activities we have selected. So it will, if everything goes right, it will duplicate the activities just below the original one. The same thing that happens with the normal duplicate, but in bulk mode. And it happens the same with the move. Now the, the move thing, it's exactly the same move we have right now, but it's adapted to be bulk. So I can move it under any activity I select. So it's it's just a bulk thing. And if I select things from different sections, it will uncollapse the sections where we have the activities and then I can move it all around. So it's quite comfortable to move things around. The same happens with sections, for example, the move thing, it's exactly the same as before. So I can select one topic or I can select two of them, for example, because the, I don't, put a name on the topics is not so spectacular because it's just moving things and renaming them, but <laughs> probably you need to... Oh, because I don't want you to just trust me, I can do it like this, move it. I would put under general, for example. So I have the named under general now. And last but not the least, probably the most useful thing when you are messing around your course, it's the bulk deletion. So I can select everything I do and just click on delete and will ask me to delete for activities and, that, and all the information. So it's removed and the same happens with topics. So I can just select a bunch of topics and set delete topic and we'll delete all of them. So it's Nice improvement. Now we have bulk editing. So especially when you import a course over another and you create many, many topics will be super helpful for teachers. And yeah, that's me. Any question? You have any question? Uh, let me check. Well, and there was two from Martin. So there was one about accessibility and, what, and the UX testing we did on this. Yeah. Uh, we have several accessibility things here. For example, the focus on the buttons, it's only available through, and this is a super long course, so it will, it will take long to get to that focus, but the buttons are only focusable when you have something selected. The focus are tested. Uh, when I pick, for example, the close bulk editing, it will focus on the bulk editing, so you can just reopen if you could it by, by accident and the availability also uh, this model here has many accessibility things like the this is the field itself but this is uh, labeled as a this uh, an a extra description on that so we try to make it accessible the fact that we have the check boxes is also accessibility thing so it's easier to just select and they have also specific titles and everything to select that activity. Yeah, we try to make it accessible, but of course we will have a, a most hardcore accessibility test later on to fix any small tweak thing we need. Anything more? Recycle bin. 
Uh, for now, the recycle yeah. bin, it's uh, the delete, it's a standard delete thing. So it's it will go to the recycle bin. It's the same thing we have. And before, it's not yet seen. No, we, we don't improve that part. So it's the same recycle we have right now. OK, long-term solution. The undo is not, uh, it's not implemented. It's something that many users ask for it, but that's not on me <laughs> to decide, I would say. And I am, I am missing something. You, you said two questions, right, before? Martin was just asking about how much, how um, had a lot of UX testing already on that on the UI. Oh yeah, yeah, that was based on a extensive uh, user testing, both indentation and bulk editing. So yeah, they, and I think fantastic. Yeah. Uh, if we, if we, it if it works, uh, I mean, it's a, it should be seen as a reusable pattern because we have other places where we do need to do similar things, we should make them consistent, like the course management page, um, maybe even databases uh, inside some of the activities. Mm. Mm. Yeah, we have uh, the, this, uh, thanks to this new feature, we have uh, quite uh, improvements. For example, now the sticky footer can be invoked via JavaScript, which was not possible in the last version. So yeah, that's, it's, it's not a pattern itself, but at least we have the the pieces to make it a pattern probably in the future. Yeah, the, like you're right, Martin, we would definitely want to reuse this pattern because it is a good pattern and it's applicable, it's widely applicable, but we really want to get some user feedback once people start actually using it um, before we start implementing it elsewhere as well. So this is probably some further refinements we want to do. Yeah. 